Hello everyone. Welcome to Arihant Padhaku. I am your educator, Dr. Alka Pandey. और आज हम क्लास ट्वेल्थ के बायोलॉजी के चैप्टर रिप्रोडक्शन इन ऑर्गेनिज्म के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे सबसे पहले मैं आपका ध्यान इस ओर आकर्षित करना चाहती हूं कि हमारी पृथ्वी पर काउंटलेस स्पीशीज ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स पाए जाते हैं ऑल दीज काउंटलेस स्पीशीज ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स हैव अ डेफिनेट लाइफ स्पैन नो वॉट इज अ लाइफ स्पैन लाइफ स्पैन is the time period from the birth of an individual to its natural death to in sabhi species ka ek definite life span hai aur ye life span vary karta hai from organisms to organisms the approximate life span of a few organisms can be seen in this table for example sequoia which is a coniferous tree has a long life span of about 3000 to 4000 years incidentally sequoia is the largest tree found in the world coming to the banyan tree it has a life span of 200 years the tortoise lives for 100 to 150 years the elephant has a life span of 65 years whereas the rice plant has a shorter life span of only 4 months the honey bee lives for 15 to 20 days and a butterfly lives for 7 to 15 days the mayfly however as we can see here has a very short life span of only a single day so now all these organisms have a definite life span and they are bound to die still kya aapne kabhi socha hai ki how these species have managed to exist and survive since several thousands of years on earth yes this is attributed to their ability to reproduce in which the organisms give rise to offspring which grow and reproduce their own offspring which are similar to them so how can reproduction be defined reproduction can be defined as a biological process of continuity of race in which the grown up individuals give rise to offspring which are very similar to them now here teen baatein reproduction ke bare mein dhyan dene layak hain sabse pehle reproduction is a biological process secondly the reproduction is very important for the continuity of the race and thirdly the offsprings produced as a result of reproduction are similar to them reproduction in the living beings are of two types sexual and asexual in the sexual reproduction the gametes from the male parent fuses with the gametes of the female parent to form zygotes whereas in the asexual reproduction no such fusion of gametes or zygote formation occur rather in the asexual reproduction the organisms or the parent cell divide to give rise to a morphologically and genetically identical organisms is prakar ke morphologically or genetically identical organisms ko hum clones bhi kehte hain ab asexual reproduction ki ek important baat ye hai that asexual reproduction can be carried out only by a single parent which means only a single individual can give rise to an offspring in the asexual reproduction now asexual reproduction is most commonly seen in the protists monarans and fungi it is of different types the different types of asexual reproduction are fission budding spore formation or sporulation regeneration and fragmentation and vegetative propagation now let's study all these types of asexual reproduction one by one first coming to the fission now fission is a type of asexual reproduction and it is of two types the binary fission 
and the multiple fission. In the binary fission, the parent cell divides into two halves. As it is evident in this figure, the binary fission, which shows the binary fission of the amoeba, the parent body of the amoeba divides into two, two halves, which are nearly equal, which give rise to two daughter cells, which are similar to the parent cell. This is an example of simple binary fission. This kind of binary fission is also seen in the bacteria. Other kinds of binary fission are longitudinal, transverse and oblique. In the longitudinal binary fission, the division occurs on the longitudinal axis of the body. This kind of binary fission is found in euglena. In the transverse binary fission, the division occurs at the transverse axis of the body. The example of transverse binary fission is paramecium. Coming to the oblique kind of binary fission, the division occurs at an angle of the transverse axis. This kind of binary fission is found in serratium and gonulox. So, the next type of fission is the multiple fission. In the multiple fission, several daughter cells are formed simultaneously. Like in binary fission, we saw two daughter cells were formed. That's why the name binary. And in multiple, several daughter cells are formed. The most common example of multiple fission is the plasmodium, which is the dangerous malarial parasite. Next type of asexual reproduction is budding. Now, budding is a process in which an outgrowth or bud develops on the parent body. As we can see here, for instance, in yeast, the parent cell, a bud or outgrowth develops on the body. In the initial phase, this bud remains attached to the parent body. It grows and later on detaches from the parent body and grows as a separate individual. Besides yeast, budding is also displayed by certain members of kingdom Animalia. As for example, we can see Hydra over here. The Hydra bears a bud on its body. This bud grows. A constriction appears at the base after some time from where it detaches and grows as a separate individual. Now since the bud appears on the external part of the body, this kind of budding is known as the external budding. In some animals, however, the budding happens internally, which is the internal budding. For example, here we can see the example of sponges. In sponges, an internal bud appears, which is known as the gemmules. Now, this gemmule, as we are seeing, is a surahi numa structure. And in this, there are many cells. These cells are arcosites. ये आर्कियोसाइट्स टॉटिपोटेंट सेल्स हैं और ये ग्रो करते हैं नए इंडिविजुअल्स में। नो नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ एसेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इस द स्पोर फॉर्मेशन और वी कैन आल्सो कॉल इट स्पोरुलेशन। नो स्पोरुलेशन अकर्स बाय मींस ऑफ थिन वॉल्ड सिंगल सेल टाइनी स्पोर्स व्हिच आर व्हिच मे बी ऑफ � now here is the figure of penicillium which bears conidia. Here we can see that this conidia ka arrangement is in the pattern pe hai, which means that the youngest cell is towards the proximal side that is it is attached to the parent body. Now these conidia germinate on the onset of favorable conditions. The other type of spore is the zoospore which can be seen in simple plants like algae. For instance, here we can see the Clamidomonas from which zoospores are coming out. Now, why do we call it zoospore? We call it zoospore as the name here, it is evident, zoo, because it is, ha it is having animal-like motility. We can see here, there is flagella and it is a motile. 
this zoospore develops into a new individual later on. Now, here I'd like to mention that in the unfavorable condition, Chlamydomonas and some other algae and fungi, they undergo sexual reproduction. Now, next comes the regeneration. Regeneration is another type of asexual reproduction with, in which the missing part of the organism is repaired by the cell proliferation. A very good example of regeneration is planaria. Matlab, planaria ko agar hum beech se kahi se kaat dete hain, to wo uski dono half body ki fir se regenerate ho jati hai. The other kind of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Fragmentation mein, the parent body is broken into two or more parts, each of which grows into an independent individual. It is also a form of regeneration. It is displayed in certain bryophytes like Marchansia and Rixia and certain filamentous algae such as Pyrogaria. The last but not the least is the vegetative propagation. Now the asexual reproduction in plants is known as vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is of two types, the natural and artificial. Vegetative propagation occurs by vegetative propagules. A vegetative propagules, kise kehte hai? Vegetative propagules, waste structure hai, which emerge from different parts of the plant body. Like we can see here, in a potato plant, is dotted by bud-like structures, which are known as eyes, on the stem. These bud-like structures give rise to certain uh, new plants. So the eyes become the vegetative propagules from where new plants are germinated. We can also see a ginger plant over here. The, the stem modification of the ginger plant, which is known as rhizome, has buds and adventitious roots. While the buds give rise to new organism, the adventitious roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. Coming to bryophyllium, bryophyllium ki leaf pe notches paai jati hai. Jo hum yaha constrictions dek raha hai, inhe hum notches kehte hai. Ye notches, these bear adventitious buds. These adventitious buds fall off from the parent body and germinate into new plants. Now besides nodes and the buds, some other vegetative propagules are runners, suckers, offsets and bulbs. Runners can be seen in oxalis. Suckers are found in chrysanthemum. Offsets can be seen in pistia as well as water hyacinth and bulbs are found in allium sepa, that is onion and lily plants. Now all these were examples of natural vegetative propagations. Besides natural vegetative propagation, artificial methods of vegetative propagation have also been developed to procure improved varieties of the plants. Some such methods are cutting, layering, grafting, etc. We have seen these methods very regularly these days in the uh, horticulture. The gardeners and the farmers make very good use of vegetative propagation in commercial cultivation of certain plants like strawberry, potatoes and ginger. However, vegetative propagation can turn in a problem in certain cases as experienced by the fishermen of Bengal. The water hyacinth, water hyacinth, which is also known as the terror of Bengal, it is, it has a phenomenal rate of vegetative propagation. It absorbs all the oxygen in the water body and the fishes and the other aquatic organisms in the body, in that water body, they get choked and killed, thereby 
ruining the life of the fishing community. Now, interestingly, this water hyacinth, which is now known as the terror of Bengal, was introduced in India for its beautiful flowers and shape of the leaves. But due to its invasive nature, it covered all the water bodies and it is very difficult to get rid of it. So now we studied about the reproduction, how important a process it is in the continuation of life. Uh, we have read that reproduction has, is of two types, sexual and asexual. We have read asexual types, ke mein padha, jo hai, uh, different types of fission, bud, budding, spore formation, regeneration, fragmentation and vegetative propagation. So now we have ki reproduction process is very important for continuity of life. Ke liye. अब हमने एसेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन के बारे में पढ़ा अब हम जानेंगे कि सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन क्या है जैसा कि हम पहले भी डिस्कस कर चुके हैं कि सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन में मेल गैमेट और फीमेल गैमेट का फ्यूजन होता है द गैमेट्स फ्रॉम द मेल पेरेंट फ्यूजेस विद द गैमेट कमिंग फ्रॉम द फीमेल पेरेंट एंड दिस फ्यूजन रिजल्ट्स इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ जाइगोट जाइगोट फॉर्मेशन की प्रक्रिया को हम सिन गैमे भी कहते हैं। Now these gametes may be produced by same individual or different individuals. The individuals which are engaged in the sexual reproduction may vary in external and internal structures. अब ये इतने variations होने के बावजूद ये जो organisms हैं, ये सारे various organisms in my kuch cheese common hoti hai. And one of them, which is common in all of these different organisms, is the phases of the life. There are three phases of life, as we can see here. The three phases of life are first the juvenile phase, dusra reproductive phase, or tisra the senescent phase. Juvenile phase को हम growth phase भी कहते हैं, इस phase में the organism grows. Reproductive phase, fertility का phase होता है, जिसमें कि organism reproduce करता है और multiply करता है अपने numbers को increase करने के लिए. Senescent phase, on the other hand, is marked by the death of the organism. <coughs> the juvenile phase is a period of growth. It is characterized by the increased in height in case of animals as well as in humans. In plants, however, it is characterized by the emergence of new leaves. Plants may, juvenile phase may, nail leaves ka agman hota hai. The juvenile phase is succeeded by the reproductive phase. Now in the reproductive phase, in plants, it is marked by the appearance of plants. Now in some plants, like rose, it flowers throughout its lifetime. Rose flower apni puri lifetime mein flowers flowering karta hai. Whereas in mango, it flowers seasonally. Kyunki mango seasonally flowering karta hai, a particular season mein hi uski आम की बोर पाई जाती है और फ्रूटिंग होती है मैंगो व्हिच इज इंसिडेंटली अ पेरेनियल प्लांट एंड इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट इन अ पेरेनियल प्लांट टू डिमार्केट द फेजेस ऑफ द लाइफ क्योंकि इन पेरेनियल प्लांट में द थ्री फेजेस ऑफ लाइफ बताना बहुत मुश्किल होता है बहुत मुश्किल होता है उनको डिफाइन करना कि वो थ्री फेजेस ऑफ लाइफ कहां पर शुरू हुए और कहां खत्म हुए दिस इज बिकॉज द पेरेनियल प्लांट्स हैव अ वेरी लॉन्ग रिप्रोडक्टिव फेज ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड दे शेड देयर लीव्स अब ये लीफ शेडिंग थ्रू आउट द ईयर भी हो सकती है या वंस इन अ ईयर भी हो सकती है ड्यूरिंग द विंटर्स बट दिस शेडिंग ऑफ लीव्स इज समटाइम्स मिसइंटरप्रेटेड फॉर द 
onset of the senescent phase. However, in the annuals and biennials, it is very easy to define the three phases. This is because the annuals complete their life cycle in one year. So all the three phases can be seen in one single year. And in the biennials, the life cycle is completed in two years, in which the first year is the growth phase occurs. And in the second year is the uh, reproductive phase and the um, senescent phase. But like the first year, mein, the plant grows and second year, mein, there is fertility, it, gives, it flowers and fruits and thereafter it dies. Now, there are some interesting facts. For example, the bamboo plant, as we all know, it flowers only once in its lifetime. And that too, it flowers once in a hundred years. After flowering, it fruits and dies. The, another plant, namely the Strobilanthus kuntiana, which is also known as Nila Kuranji, it flowers every 12 years. Now when in mass bloom, it transforms the hilly areas of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala into beautiful blue stretches and these blue stretches attract tourists. Now, as we see in plants, in the reproductive phase, mein, there is emergence of flower and some changes are seen in the same way. In the same way, some changes are seen in the same way. Mein aate so the reproductive phase in animals is, marked, is also marked by the various morphological and physiological changes. In, in human beings, for example, this stage starts at the onset of the puberty. The onset of the puberty leads to the development of various secondary sexual characters, such as facial hair in the males. Now, Females of the all placental mammals, which includes both primates and non-primates, these females ye demonstrate karti hai, cyclical changes in the activities of their ovaries, their accessing drugs, and the hormones during this phase. In cyclical changes ko hum kehte hai, menstrual cycle primates mein or estrous cycle non-primates mein. Now these cycles, both the menstrual and estrous cycle, they stop when the female is pregnant and they resume when the female has given birth to the offspring. Kuch placental mammals mein, jo ki mostly wild life, wild uh, life mein rehte hain, when they exhibit cycles and breed only during favorable seasons. Thus, they are also known as seasonal breeders. Other mammals, including the humans, are reproductively active throughout their reproductive phase. Therefore, these animals are also known as continuous breeders. Thank you.